Uh, welcome to uh, Harness Racing SA once again. I'm here today with one of uh, Harness Racing's most uh, recognisable names, A.G. Smith. Uh, 81 years old, still training and driving, still got the pink and green squares going around regularly at Globe Derby Park. Welcome, Alan. 1953, I've uh, done the sums as your first drive. 2017, not only still training, but still driving. How's all that going? Well, it's been a bit, a bit hard, but we're still getting there. That's still getting the there. Thing. So you still love it, obviously. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's been there for your life, just about, I guess, hasn't it? From All my life. I was brought up with horses, with mum and dad. And yeah. There, so. And always based at uh, Semaphore? That's... Where, when I come down here, but we, well, I was born in Pirrit. Okay. Pirrit. Yep. And still training out of? Out of Semaphore, yeah. Yep. Semaphore. So where do you train your horses, mate, on, on a regular morning? Uh, down on the beach. Central always beach. Always beach? Yeah, always beach. And then to here when they're ready to try? They float out here to uh, do fast work, yeah. Right, okay. And uh, so at this age now, after 50 odd, yeah. 60 years in the game, what time are you up in the mornings? Oh, I still get up about 4 o'clock in the mornings. Yep. Because we've got to be off the beach by 8 o'clock, so okay. the horses. And how many have you got in work at the moment? I've only got three. Three in work? Yeah. How long does that take you of a morning, mate, to just get through the three? Uh, my wife, she uh, does the uh, cleaning up around the stables, feeds them and waters them in the morning, and I go down and jog them. Yep. And then when we come out here and do fast work, the uh, girl that uh, lives at the stables in the house there, she comes out and helps us drive her fast work. It's only okay. Swinson. So, so in, in a normal day, how many hours a day are involved in the horses, like the afternoons as well, because you've got to feed up in the afternoons? Oh, yeah, we go back in the afternoons and feed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd say about five or six hours. Well, I, I don't work hard these days. Yeah. So at your peak, how many did you have in work when you were? Uh, about 28. And you still did the majority of that with just the family? That was. Yeah, just the family. Yeah, I never ever employed people or anything. We always uh, done it ourselves and the family. Yeah. And I, I chatted to you before, and I've always thought because of I've been in harness racing for 30 odd years, and to me it was always A. G. Smith. Uh, trotting trainer, um, but you're saying back in the Wayville days you, you almost hated them and it was only when you came out to Globe Derby that you got involved with trotters and now they're a big part of your stable for the last ten odd years? Well the funny part about it is now I've got two trotters and only one pacer. Really? Back in the Wayville days I, I didn't like uh, trotters mainly because I had a couple and I wasn't successful with them. Yep. So I thought that go back no to where the money is. That's right. Yeah. So I stuck to paces. Yeah. And um, you've had a fair bit of luck with the Keystone breed over the years as well. A couple of those. They're the square gators. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which which are the ones there that you've had the most success with? Uh, the Keystone Cop and Keystone Rule. Yep. They both went to the. Uh, I'm not saying they were championship horses but they was in the end of the Minion Championship. They were, they were good enough to take there and, yeah, and yes. hold their own. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, I suppose you could say yeah. they held their own, but they, they, they only raced in the Constellation. Yeah, the but that would have been exciting for you as well, to, to have horses that could make that grade, and you know, you're saying they, they couldn't win, but you were you were in the excitement of the big time there, weren't well, you? Well, yeah, well, it's nice to have had a couple like that, because Dad had minor derby in the end of Minion and yep. Sydney, so... Uh, yep. So now I've had one, and two yeah. in the end of Minion. Yeah. So. Now, I've heard the story, Minor Derby, trained by your dad. That's right. And uh, there was a young A.G. Smith that used to ride his pony alongside that horse when it was in work, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tinker, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How old yeah. were you then, now? Oh, I was only about 10 or 12. 10. I wasn't very old. Yeah. So when were you first able to uh, jump behind the sulky for dad and and uh, start driving some work. At what age were you then? Oh, when I was uh, young, when I was about 10, I was driving in, uh, in track work at uh, Port Pirri. Okay. We was at Port Pirri. Yep. Yeah. And now, of course, your son, David, is uh, firmly entrenched in harness racing and his stable's actually going very, very well at the moment as well. He's done a very good job. Like, uh, he's, uh, I've never had to give him any uh, uh, advice or anything and that yep. there, so he's, He's worked it all out himself and good yep. luck to him. And he's based at Penfield with how many in work? I think he's got about 20 in work, I think. Wow. Yeah, he's and, got a few uh, horses out there. Dad doesn't go out and give a hand every now and then? or? No, no, no. no he's, him and his wife, they're capable of doing it. Yeah. And then a grandson comes along and he's uh, 
Yeah. He's doing a good job as well. Yeah, yeah, he's not a bad little driver for his age. Yeah. He's, uh, he's got one horse that he trains, and yeah. he's uh, going all right with a Missy e. Murdoch and that. So, yeah. like, no, uh, Michael, he's going on, he'll make a nice driver. Well, that's good. So, let's go back to minor derby with your dad. How exciting was that to have an inter -minion, inter dominion quality horse in the stable? Did, did, were you old enough to realise the excitement around that? or? Well, I used to drive him in track work and that there. Like, he was a lovely horse to drive. Yeah. But uh, I was too young to drive him in a race or anything. Yeah. But, uh, we always used to hold him on the market uh, when he raced and that there. Well, when yep. I say hold him, you'd go out there and you'd pat him on the neck and that just to take his mind off things because he's bad, always bad away. Right. And that was back in the day where we had no choice, mate. It was standing starts and that was it. Yeah, there was no mobiles around <laughs> in those days. No, no. Was it a hard thing to teach them uh, to get away from a stand? Well, Dad actually got mine and Dad because he used to break a lot of horses in. Yeah. And they couldn't get into pace. Okay. But uh, and that, that was the reason why he got him. Lovell Lane actually broke him in. Yeah. And uh, he couldn't get into pace. And they said, Dad, can come, Dad had to come to get him. Right. And did a very good job with him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. How many races did he win, do you know? Oh, I think it was 40, nearly 50 races. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So would it, was it harder to get a horse away from the stand at Wayville compared to the bigger tracks, or no different really? No, it was just there a... wasn't, wasn't any different to get away from a stand of start today to what it was in the Wayville days. Yeah. Mm. And I always ask this question, Alan, because I, I loved, I only went to Wayville a, a couple of times, but I, I loved the environment of Wayville. It just seemed exciting. The horses were always close in the parade ring, in the stalls, and then out on the track. The, the whole thing just seemed really, really close to me as a kid. Was it a more exciting venue than, say, Globe Derby or any other bigger track? Oh, yeah, back in those days it was, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah they, you, you was really uh, nearly sitting on top of the horses. At yeah. Life on that there, I was that close to you in that there. Yeah. Would you have loved them to stay there and made that track bigger, or yes, in hindsight? Yes, yes, I would. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, an idea I've always had that uh, Victoria Park race course could have been the home of racing, pacing and chasing every Friday night in the city? Well, I reckon it would have been a very good idea <laughs> to have three venues in the one place. Yeah, I, I in just... The, in the metropolitan area. You know, I just thought under lights on a Friday night or a Saturday night, probably Friday night because people knock off from work the same as they did at Harold Park in Sydney where they used to wander down to uh, the Glebe uh, trotting track and have massive crowds there. I just always thought that if the three codes could get together and say, "Radio, this is what we want to do and, and have it every Friday night, I thought the crowds, even today with Sky Channel and, and the access to phone betting and, and internet betting, people would still go to the track. Well, you'd get a lot, lot more at the track if you uh, was in the metropolitan area. Yeah. You know I mean, they, we're this side of uh, the city and the people of the other side of the city, they got too far to travel to come here. Yeah. That's why they, uh, they crowd it down a bit. Yeah. Um, did you embrace the change from Wayville to Glebe Derby? It was just something that was going to happen. Were we well, excited to come to a bigger track, or just yeah, we did want a bigger track, yeah. Yeah. Especially today, because uh, horses today they're, they're going a lot faster today than what they was back in the Wayville days. Yeah. So they did need a bigger track. Yeah. Would you like to see this track made bigger now? Is it is it time yes, to? Yes, it'd be ideal if they could make this track bigger. Yeah. But well, which way are they going to go to do it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. That's what uh, architects and surveyors are for, mate, yeah, to work oh, out these right. sorts of things. That's but right. if it's if it's better for us to have a bigger track, to me, it's got to be front of mind for the uh, authorities to have a have a good look at it. And because uh, we run some time out here, and you're racing for Ooh. not a lot of money, but if you can't crack one fifty-eight and a half, you're not winning a race on a Monday Ooh. afternoon. That is for sure. Like but that's just shows you how much horses have improved from the Wavell days to the day. Yep. I mean, we, I've improved with breeding, but also the tracks has improved too. Yeah, yep. So uh, the colours of the pink and green squares, mate, that I've seen out here since I followed harness racing in the in the 80s, it would be like going to work and putting on the uh, work uniform, wouldn't it? And some days going out and earning good money, and other days work going home with uh, not much to show for it. Well, that's right. Uh, they were mum and dad's colours. Oh, they were? Yeah, they were mum and dad's, yeah. Yep, yep. 
Have you ever forgotten them when you went to the races, mate? No, no. Never forgotten them, never, never left them behind? Them, no. Good work. Now, I'll put you on the spot. A couple of your favourite horses that have wandered through the semaphore stables of A.G. Smith. Well, I would say the best horse I've had would have been... Uh, The Trotter would be one of the best, and also uh, Keystone Cop would be the best, and there's yep. also uh, the Black Horse, I just can't think of his name now. Well, his name was How many there. races did he win? Well, he won a good few races, but he uh, wouldn't have got around Wable Track. And I right. uh, finished up selling him to America. Oh, okay. Well, he went over was that a lucrative States. thing, in, even back then? Alan to, to sell horses over to the States? Uh, yeah, there was a lot of horses went to uh, the States. Yep. There. yep. So harness racing has been your life, all me probably life. all your life, mate. Yeah, yeah. And you still obviously love it. Well, still get up in the mornings and still I've love got your to do horses. Something, otherwise, you can't stay home and do nothing. So. Well, when I saw you sitting over there waiting to have the interview, I, I looked over and thought, that is A.G. Smith. and. If he's 81, he's going to live to his about 130. You look fantastic, <laughs> I don't know about that. and uh, going really, really well. And it, I, I love following your horses. I always look to see if you've got horses in. Your colours are just so recognisable for the whole of South Australia. I'm sure. Um, any sign of giving it away, mate, or has it ever entered your head that enough's enough? Well, if I do give away driving, which probably I will next year. Yep. And uh, but I'll still train. Still train. Yeah. You've got to do something. You've got to do something all yeah, the time, mate. That's right, so. that's right. And friendships out here, you know, there's, oh, it's yeah. been your life, yeah, I'm sure. that's right, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It's different driving out here to what it was back in the Wavell days. Yeah. On this track to what you drove in the Wavell days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can still think on uh, race day that I'm a chance today, or is it just getting tougher and tougher to think that uh, I'll finish in the money? or? You, well, races are very hard to win because there's so many horses that can run the same time, but it's the one that can carry on running that time. Yeah. That's what wins your races. Yeah. All right, mate. Well, it's been uh, fantastic. I've seen you around for 30 odd years and never had the pleasure to say good day to you. Um, fantastic career. As I said, I've followed it for a long time and hope it goes for another 10 years yet. Well done. Good. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Good on you, mate.